I've looked at quite a few of the Planck base units, and I've even worked them out mathematically. But today I'm going to look at one of the derived units, and I'll compare it to some other things to see how big or small it is. Today then, I'm going to be looking at the Planck density. Let's find out more. Before we start, we need to know what density is. Density is a measure of how tightly packed a material is. In other words, how much stuff is packed into a certain volume of space. To work out density then, we need a formula and units. And this is the formula that we use. Density, which is denoted by the Greek letter rho, equals mass divided by volume. The SI unit of density is kilograms per metre cubed. Even though I'm British, and we tend to use a mixture of SI and imperial units seemingly at random, I'm not massively familiar with the imperial units. I've done a bit of googling and found that the US commonly uses pounds per cubic foot. Apologies if I got that wrong. I'll try and do as many conversions as I can, but once we get up to the really big numbers, the conversions are going to be irrelevant anyway. So now that we know what density is and we have our units, time to see how dense different materials are, and then we can compare that to the Planck density, which is very dense indeed. At the end, I'll show you where the numbers come from. And we'll start off by looking at some very undense things and work our way up. I'm going to kind of skip over the density of outer space, well, sort of, for a number of reasons. Firstly, outer space means different things depending on where you are. Interplanetary space, in other words, space within our solar system, may contain anything up to a few million particles per cubic metre. Interstellar space, which is the space between stellar systems, generally contains fewer particles per cubic metre than space within the solar system. In addition, intergalactic space, in other words, space between galaxies, contains even fewer particles still. So there really is no one answer to what outer space is. Even deep space contains some particles, so what we might call the vacuum of space isn't really a vacuum. In fact, there are no real vacuums at all. Even if I was able to completely empty a cubic metre of space of all of the particles, that space still wouldn't be empty. Firstly, the whole of reality is pervaded by fields, which form the particles that inhabit the universe. The fields that pervade all of reality are undergoing constant energy fluctuations, and this results in particles popping into and out of existence all the time. Empty space, then, never really is empty. From sources that i found and my own calculations, I'm going to put a very, very, very vague number on the density of outer space as being about 10 to the minus 25 kilograms per metre cubed. Let's now start having a look at the density of some things that we're a bit more certain of. How about the density of the air around us? Well, actually, we again have to be a little bit careful here, because the density of the air will change depending on the temperature and altitude and how much water vapour is in the air. In science, we often use something called standard temperature and pressure. This allows us to compare things properly. Standard temperature and pressure is rated at one atmosphere, that's generally the air at sea level, although that can change according to the weather, and also 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The density of the dry air at standard temperature and pressure is 1.293 kilograms per metre cubed. Writing this in standard form, this would be 1.293 times 10 to the 0 kilograms per metre cubed. Let's go up a little bit more dense and see what we can find. The planet Saturn in our solar system has a density of 687 kilograms per metre cubed. That's 6.87 times 10 to the 2 kilograms per metre cubed. So why does Saturn have such a low density? It isn't really known exactly why, but it's probably got something to do with the fact that during its formation, Saturn ended up being formed mainly from the gases hydrogen and helium. These are the lightest gases in the universe. And also, Saturn then doesn't have sufficient size to squash those gases together under gravity to the extent that would give it a higher density. Let's come up a little to 10 to the 3 kilograms per metre cubed, or in other words, 1,000 kilograms per metre cubed. Here we find the density of pure water. Again, we have to be a little careful. 
pure water has a density of 1000 kilograms per meter cubed at a temperature of 4 degrees C or 39 Fahrenheit. This means that if I had a cube of water with each side of the cube being one meter in length, the water inside would have a mass of 1000 kilograms or one ton. So water's quite heavy really. Many of the planets in our solar system also have densities in this range. The planet Jupiter has a density of 1.3 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Even though it's composed mainly of hydrogen and helium, just like Saturn is, it has sufficient mass and therefore gravity to make it a lot more dense than Saturn. Our Sun has an average density of 1408 kilograms per meter cubed, which is just a little bit more than water. However, the Sun changes in density as we move down through the different layers, the outer layers not being very dense at all, and the core being very dense indeed, as we'll find out in a little bit. Most of the rocky planets in the solar system also have densities around here as well. Venus has a mean density of 5.24 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Mercury is slightly more dense at 5.43 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed, and the most dense planet in the solar system is Earth, with a mean density of 5.51 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Mars is a bit of an outlier, with a density of just 3.3 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. But why should this be the case? Well, the density of the Earth isn't really 5.51 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. The density of the crust would be much lower than that, but because the Earth has a large iron core with a very high density, the average density overall is 5.51 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Because Mars formed further out in the solar system, there was less iron available to form a core. As a result, Mars has a much smaller core, and therefore a lower average density. Let's come up another factor of 10 to 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cubed. In other words, 10,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Well, what do we have here? We're going to find some metals here. Silver has a density of 1.05 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cubed, or 10,500 kilograms per meter cubed. Silver has the highest reflectivity of any metal and is a better conductor of electricity than copper, but is more expensive and so isn't used in electrical cables. Lead is the heaviest stable element. All elements that are heavier, and by which I mean have a higher atomic number, are radioactive to some extent. Lead has a density of 1.13 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cubed. In other words, 11,300 kilograms per meter cubed. The densest of all elements is osmium, with a density of 2.26 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cubed, or 22,570 kilograms per meter cubed. Even though osmium isn't the heaviest element, Density is all about how many atoms can be packed into a particular volume, and osmium atoms can be packed in really tightly. Osmium has a large nucleus with a lot of protons in it, 76 to be precise. There are electrons orbiting the nucleus, well that's not quite true but I don't want to get into wave functions here, and the effect is pretty much the same. Because the electrons are negatively charged, they're pulled closer to the nucleus by all the protons. This means that osmium has a small atomic radius, and so more atoms of osmium can be packed into any particular volume, making osmium the densest of all elements. Let's move up another factor of 10 to 10 to the 5 kilograms per meter cubed. This would then be 100,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Do we have anything here? Well, yes, we do. The core of our sun is estimated to have a density of 1.62 times 10 to the 5 kilograms per meter cubed, or in other words 162,000 kilograms per meter cubed. The core of the Sun consists of a super dense, super hot plasma of ions and electrons, and it's in the core of the Sun that nuclear fusion takes place, generating almost all the energy that the Sun produces. From here on up, we're relying on the power of gravity to make things more dense by squashing them. So the rest of our journey we'll be looking at stellar objects, well nearly, 
but let's carry on. When a sun with about the same mass as our sun runs out of hydrogen fuel in its core, nuclear fusion in the core will stop. The power of nuclear fusion was holding that star stable against the force of gravity trying to crush the star smaller and smaller. The core of the star then will contract. As this happens, the temperature increases to a point where hydrogen in a shell around the core will start to fuse. This then will cause the star to expand, cooling as it does. The star will then become a red giant. After a series of shrinking and expanding episodes using different elements as fuel, the star will eventually run out of all its fusible fuel. It will then shed its outer layers and what remains will be a white dwarf star. There's no nuclear fusion going on and so gravity tries to crush the star further and further. And this happens until all the electrons have been squashed as much as they can. However, there isn't enough mass, and so not enough gravity, to squash the matter any further. White dwarf stars are, however, incredibly dense. A white dwarf has about half the mass of our sun, but in a body about the size of the Earth. A white dwarf then has a density of about 1 times 10 to the 9 kilograms per meter cubed, or in other words, a billion kilograms per meter cubed. I said that we were in outer space for all our remaining objects, that's not quite true. We need to go up to 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed, or 100 million billion kilograms per meter cubed now, and at a density of 2.3 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed, we find the density of atomic nuclei. Atoms consist of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and a cloud of electrons orbiting the nucleus. That's quite a simplification, but it'll do us for now. 99.94% of the mass of an atom is contained within the nucleus, and the nucleus is really tiny. The size of an atom is about 100,000 times bigger than the size of the nucleus. In other words, if the nucleus of an atom was the size of a tennis ball, the cloud of electrons surrounding it would start six and a half kilometers away, that's about four miles. Without the electrons then, the density of the nuclei is huge. There isn't much that's more dense than that, but coming up a little bit to 10 to the 18 kilograms per meter cubed, we find the most dense object in the known universe, and that's the neutron star. In stars that have more than eight times the mass of our sun, when they come to the end of their life, the power of gravity crushes the star further and further, denser and denser, until a neutron star remains. There isn't anything more dense than a neutron star in the known universe. Well, that's not quite true. We haven't looked at black holes yet, although the density of black holes does differ depending on their size. Some of them are not particularly dense at all. What I'm really talking about here is the singularity at the centre of the black hole. In very massive stars, when they come to the end of their life, the pressure of gravity is so high that it crushes the star down to a singularity. Physicists think that the singularity has an infinite density, although we don't really know what happens inside a black hole, and we may well never know, as nothing can ever escape from a black hole. So, finally, onto the Planck density. Well, how big is that? Firstly, let's see where we get this number from. Well, in order to calculate density, we need a measure of volume and a measure of mass. Now, a volume is just a size with three dimensions, and to calculate a volume, we need a measure of length. So we can use then the measurement for the Planck length to calculate the Planck volume. This is a volume with the length of each side being the Planck length. The Planck volume then is the Planck length cubed. We know that the Planck length is 1.616 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. This then gives us a Planck volume of 4.22 times 10 to the minus 105 meters cubed. The Planck mass is 2.176 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms. I did a video deriving some of the Planck units mathematically. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see me doing maths for 20 minutes. We know that the formula for density is mass divided by volume, and so by plugging in our values, we come up with a Planck density of 5.155 
times 10 to the 96 kilograms per meter cubed. That is so unbelievably dense. It is a million trillion 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 times more dense than even the most dense object in the known universe. Let's try and imagine just how dense that is. There are a number of estimates of the mass of the observable universe. What I'm going to use is 10 to the 53 kilograms. Imagine then that I took all of the visible matter in the universe and squashed it into a space with a volume of just one cubic meter. I will be nowhere near. If I then squashed all that matter into a size just a hundred times bigger than a proton, I would now be at about the right kind of density. That's how stupefyingly big the Planck density is. So, does the Planck density have any significance at all? Well, according to some mathematical models of the start of the universe, the first 10 to the minus 43 of a second, and that's this much of a second, is called the Planck epoch. During this time, our current laws of physics break down and the universe was likely dominated by quantum gravity. We don't have a working theory of quantum gravity, so we're unable to make any predictions about the universe during the Planck Epoch. It's thought that during the Planck Epoch, that the density of the universe was the Planck density. In other words, the whole universe squashed into a volume not much bigger than a proton. That's very dense. The only things more dense are singularities at the hearts of black holes, but the universe doesn't allow us to see them. Well, you found me at the end of this video here, orbiting a black hole, just thinking about the nature of the stunningly beautiful universe that we live in. Don't forget that if you enjoy my videos, please think to subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for videos, or places for me to visit, leave a comment below. And for now, and until next time, Thank you for watching.